So is it time to get tougher on those who flagrantly flout COVID regulations? Mm. People, for example, like SNP MP Margaret Ferrier, who travelled by, travelled by train from Scotland to London to Parliament, despite testing positive for the virus. Well, well and we've down, just found went out. Went down with symptoms, yep. went to Parliament to thank the NHS. Can you mm -hmm. believe this? Finds out she tested positive, then goes back to Scotland on two trains. Mm -hmm. Now it turns out she's been to church in the middle of all this, mm -hmm. a gift shop, a beauty salon and a leisure centre. Mm -hmm. And she still hasn't resigned, despite everyone saying she's got to go. I've got to say, her party I've got to say, Margaret Ferry, you have got some balls, love, <laughs> haven't you? Huh? You've got some front and balls, because it is an absolute disgrace that you are still an MP. But anyway... Um, We're also talking about the England footballers, Tammy Abraham, Ben Chilwell and Jaden Sancho, all filmed at a packed birthday party over the weekend. And, of course, there was Jeremy Corbyn, his dinner party for at least nine, instead of the rule of six, and the Prime Minister's dad, Stanley Johnson, and his failure to learn to wear a mask properly. Ironically, Stanley Johnson there reading a story about himself failing to wear a mask and is not wearing a mask again. Stanley... I love you, mate, but please. He's got the mask stop on, breaking, it's just not over all the parts of the face. Your own son's rules, because it, it makes him look bad. It makes it look like none of the Johnsons care. Um, so it may sound extreme, but should fines be replaced for particularly persistent miscreants with prison sentences? Well, joining us now is Dr. Shola Moshog Bamamim. I nearly got that right, and she's going to kill me again. A lawyer and women's rights activist who says, yes, lock them up. Uh, entrepreneur and business owner True Powell, who says a spell behind bars for rule breakers is a step too far. And former judge Jeffrey Robertson QC thinks prison could be an option for repeat offenders. Well, it's a stellar panel. Mm. Um, well, let's start with you, uh, Dr. Shola. You're quite tough on this. Go for it. Well, let me set the scene. Let me set the scene, guys. I think Margaret Ferrier, the SNP MP, makes the case for why a custodial sentence is the appropriate response to a depraved indifference to life. Think about this for a second. Any conduct like hers that knowingly and recklessly takes their highly infectious, and highly contagious virus-infected self into public spaces and knowing that it will be easily transmitted, that is reprehensible. And in my opinion, a fine does not do justice to the magnitude of the heinous misconduct of that behavior. It is a depraved indifference to life. And look, in most cases, I think that a fine would be appropriate for 99.9% of COVID idiocy. But I want us to understand that we are 10 months into a global pandemic. We have an utterly incompetent government. We do not have tests and trace that works. Bottom line, there's so many things still going wrong that we have to rely on each other. We have to be able to act in good faith and in goodwill to protect each other and be able to suppress this thing. So people who knowingly and recklessly, uh, you know, apply a conduct of depraved indifference, as far as I'm concerned, a custodial sentence is the appropriate response. Okay, well, you certainly... Okay, <laughs> we got your view right. pretty loud and clear, yes. Dr Shola, as always. Uh, I feel Powell. more instructed by you, Dr Shola, than I do currently by the government, frankly, and that... I mean, that is part of the problem, isn't it? But, True Powell, you feel that this could disproportionately punish people and put too many people in overcrowded prisons already. Absolutely. I mean, don't get me wrong, I fully and completely understand the pandemic. I know how serious coronavirus is, and I know the challenges it's placing on public health. However, I feel, firstly, that the prisons are already overcrowded. You know, let's just put it out there. So to put more people in prisons that are already overcrowded because of the pandemic, I think is a catastrophe. Secondly, there is going to be a certain demographic that's already going to be targeted more so than others, and we, and we would have already seen it. And actually, I believe that it's already happening. My church, my home church on Sunday had already been targeted and challenged by the police, even though they followed all the guidance, even though they were socially distanced, even though it was a ticketed um, church service and went above and beyond, they still were challenged. And that is a problem that we've got. Well, yes, that's we ironic would... true. I just want to interject because Dr Shola's point is a very powerful one which is that there's adhering to the rules and then there's recklessly putting other people's health at risk. And actually, this emergence that Margaret Ferrier went to a church yeah. um, after the day after she'd taken the test, so she'd been concerned enough about her symptoms to take the test. We now know that the test turned out uh, to be positive. Does that not, for all everything else you're saying, 
If someone came into your church at the weekend and thought that they may have COVID, does that not change the balance slightly for you? Absolutely not. I think they need to be punished, yes. And I think fines are more than sufficient to criminalise someone and to, to throw them in prison um, for for COVID that's just came about in the last 10 months. People are unsure, and I'm talking about normal people here. Um, people are unsure. There are mixed messages. You could do this and do that. Government are complete, have completely got it wrong. So to criminalise somebody for not sure, not knowing what to do, I think is a catastrophe. OK, let's and bring I in... All right, let's bring in Geoffrey Robertson, QC. I, I mean, it's obviously, you know, you don't want to be too draconian, but a lot of people already responding, saying this, this Scottish National Party MP, Margaret Ferrier, what she did as a Member of Parliament is so reckless, and she can't claim to not know the rules, she's a Member of Parliament, for goodness sake, that what she did, the systematic way that she ignored every single rule, putting countless lives at risk. We don't know who she encountered in the church, in the gym, in the beauty salon, on the two trains, in the Houses of Parliament. But we do know that when you put it all together, it's a very serious, repeated breach of every guideline, and she knew for at least half of it she was COVID positive, which is positive with a lethal virus if you're in one of the vulnerable groups. Is there not an argument to, to actually say, you know what, you're refusing to resign, You've shown no real uh, public rules. You've seen no video footage of her apologising for this, just one brief statement. Is it not an argument to just sling her in a prison cell for a few weeks to try and you know, pound some sense into her? <laughs> I think you've got a pitchfork in your right hand. I have a bit. I have a bit, but I'll tell now you why, listen. Geoffrey, before you answer, I'll tell you why I've got a pitchfork in my hand. It's because yesterday we interviewed two brothers who, uh, this footage of, of a funeral, with just a handful of people, their no, father had died and their mother was sitting on her own and was clearly distressed mm -hmm. and both of her boys came together and sat next to her and in barge the Jobsworth funeral uh, director person shouting mm -hmm. in the middle of this service for their father, you've got to get apart, got to get apart. And when you watch that, yeah. you know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm all for rule observance because I think it matters and I think if, if everyone doesn't do it, then those who do feel aggrieved at those who don't and so on. But this was so grating. I mean, watch this guy. This is the middle of a funeral service. Yeah. And makes, makes the boys leave their grieving mother, grieving for her... At their most sensitive Grieving for her, yes. her husband who just died. Now, so, so I would preface what I say about Margaret Ferrier. Yes, yes, I have a pitchfork in my hand, but it's because of that that I feel so incensed about it. Well, Piers, I'm the same age as Donald Trump, <laughs> and if I'm taken to hospital, I want what he's having. But, of course, <laughs> I won't get it on the NHS. We don't, we're running out of remdesivir and other drugs are not available here. So I've got every interest in stopping these COVID idiots uh, and I want them punished, but I want them punished properly. Margaret Ferrier actually happens to be one of the best, brightest MPs in the house, certainly better than the other SNP. She's a blithering uh, idiot, Jeffrey. But I'm sorry to jump in. Wait a minute. Bright, if she's you the want... brightest, how dumb are the dumbest? Well, exactly. And, of course, they don't know the rules. But what has to happen is that we have to have an arrest, she has to be taken to court, and she has to be given an opportunity to explain. And then she has to be given a fine. Uh, at the moment, we can't go higher than a thousand pounds. I think so. Reckless in endangerment but, to life. If but, I get in a car, yes. which I get in the car, this point. and I go fifteen well, yes, miles over the speed limit, done. and I and it's I put people's lives properly. at risk, I get punished. Not as Look, not I, I as some sort of wait, wait, sure, sure. let Jeffrey I, finish. I think we have to have increased fines up to ten thousand pounds. There's no point in putting people in prison which are overcrowded and uh, hotbeds for COVID, uh, keep them out of prison unless they're second or third offenders. Mm -hmm. But we have to have proper laws uh, which the public respect at the moment. The laws, the rules change every but few she days. She was a multiple a, offender, Margaret Ferrier. Is, Margaret Ferrier, uh, there is a Margaret lot Ferrier of, has symptoms and she I'm ignored the symptoms to come to Parliament, one offence. She then tested positive Margaret. and got Ferrier. on trains. I'm just saying that she should be entitled to her day in court. 
to explain oh, herself. When football, Men, Jeffrey, when we have football hooligans, Jeffrey, fo Jeffrey, football hooligans or rioters. Yeah, but Jeffrey, let me finish. Wait, Jeffrey, let me just say, when yeah, we have football yeah, hooligans yeah. causing trouble at football matches, they often get slung straight in prison. Actually, it's a short, well, sharp shot. Exactly. We often do uh, that. Yes, What's I the difference? In, she is a political hooligan who's taken COVID board. into the populace. We I can't listen to both of you at the same time. At the moment. Can but I say if I could say yeah. for a moment that there have to be consequences when you break these rules and the rot set in when there were no consequences for Dominic coming. Okay. Very true. Uh, that's, that's a very good point. Let's just, Doctor, Sh we're running out of time and Dr Shoda would like to say something okay. and at the moment I, I everyone's talking understand. at the same time. Yeah. I need us to understand that there, there, there are varying degrees of COVID idiocy. And we are not talking about putting 99.9% .9 in prison. We're talking about the minority, I hope, who, I, when I say minority, I, the small number, who will do what Margaret Ferrier did? I could not give a flying flamingo how smart she is. As far as I'm concerned, she put people's lives in danger. And that, for me, should be a custodial sentence. We cannot continue to have people who act with a depraved yeah. indifference to life. OK, that Shola, um, I've that got to say... It's wrong. All right, two things. Argument. One, Shola, I find myself in the extraordinary position of agreeing with everything you just said, which is a very rare thing when we uh, clash on television. <laughs> and secondly, I just want to say you've got the best Zoom background I think we've had on the show. It is literally a work of magnificent art, your whole background. I know you put a lot of thought into it, so I want to acknowledge it and congratulate <laughs> you. Uh, well Thank done. You. Uh, and Jeffrey, uh, thank you very much, uh, and, and to, Drew to, well. to Drew Powell as well. Really good debate. I think most of our viewers think Margaret Ferrier should be getting her next COVID-positive trip to her prison cell. Anyway, thank you all very much indeed.